Hi there, I'm uh, Runiano Rasmussen. I'm a historian of religion from the University of uh, Uppsala. And this is one of my little modifying or additional per perspectives to everybody's favorite cowboy professor, Jackson Crawford, who uh, recently gave us a little update on Norse mythology concerning the moon, which, according to Crawford, um, is not a big part of Norse mythology. Uh, in fact, uh, Norse mythology, he says, is surprisingly indifferent to heavenly bodies. And as usual, I feel enlightened and wiser after having watched uh, Crawford's uh, videos. However, this is also a really good example of how you can get a very different image if you take more of an anthropology of religions perspective on, um, on Nordic history of religions uh, and, and sort of look a little bit beyond the narrow perspective of what Icelandic manuscripts say. Um, yeah. So when, when you put a broader historical perspective and look at the ways that North Europeans have animated their world uh, through the times, then you find that the moon has had a very important role indeed. Uh, a very important role, and uh, the fact that this is not reflected in ma Icelandic manuscript material, well, that, that should probably perhaps tell you something about being a little bit careful about projecting that material too far. Um, and Jackson is obviously right when he says that it's difficult to see unambiguous patterns in how uh, the moon was viewed and so on. But there are patterns nonetheless, and I'm, I will tell you a little bit about it now. Uh, for instance, in pre-modern peasant societies, there was a lot of activities that were timed by the moon. And the background for that was that the moon was perceived as sort of the breath of life in the world. So the waxing and the waning of the moon was, was really important. Um, and the waxing would mark the time for all kinds of activities that had to do with growth, you know, sowing fields, mating livestock, you know, harvesting, threshing, and um, all, the, the, all those kind of activities. They were done, done during the waxing moon. And this would provide stronger fodder for the livestock, and it would increase the milk production. Stuff would grow, you know. Animals slaughtered during this uh, period of the waxing moon were said to give a stronger or better meat. Um, it was also the time to bring in horses for the winter. They would be stronger, so they would survive the winter better, or cut trees for firewood. They, it would burn better, or make candles, so their light would be sort of charged with the power of the moon, basically. Um, it was also the ideal time for marriage proposals. And on the other hand, uh, the waning moon was the good time to attack something, like boils or lice or uh, potentially, the potentially dangerous growth uh, that needed to be contained, such as um, uh, sowing the winter seed that could grow a little bit too fast and be destroyed by the, the frost. So, um, um, yeah. Also, actually, crops that grew below ground were sown, sown in, the, in the waning moon. Potatoes and, and such. So Nordic animism through the, the ages has basically seen a huge importance in the moon. And the lunar phases played a vital role also in the, how the uh, pre-Christian Nordic lunisolar year was uh, reckoned. Uh, and this continued well into the modern era. And I, I made another video about this, so you can search for runic calendar, then you'll find it. Um, and in, in this system, uh, uh, a month would be counted from one new moon to the next. And this system is, is ancient. You know, there's oldest Roman sources that suggest that Germanic, Germanic peoples uh, timed religious gatherings around the new moon and the full moon. And uh, as recently as in the 15th century, there was a bishop, Peter uh, Masson in Jutland, who reports that he looked over the flat uh, marshlands uh, around uh, Ribe and he saw what he called heathen masses praying to the new moon. Um, and, and he said that, that there are many nowadays who worship the new moon and they kneel for it with a bare head and they talk to it and some also worship the sun and so on. So, uh, so the new moon marked uh, the beginning of a lunar moon, 
and this was considered basically sacred and it called for prayers for the coming month uh, and the moon to to bless the activities of the month and that also mean that the first new moon after the winter solstice was considered the first day of the year and probably considered the first day of the year on that day people would give offerings of bread to this new moon and uh, use it for divinations about the years the coming year's harvest in scania this new moon that's uh modern day southern sweden um the, the new moon was greeted with a, a prayer that went welcome king new welcome lord with grain and seed with pork and lard and good grain in harvest that's a, a prayer to the first new moon of of the year and this is also reflected in the the uh, runic calendar of the swedish tradition and you can you can check my other video about that uh, in, in which uh, one specific rune would mark the new moon, the new moon of a particular year. Um, so I just want to make the point that when when uh, J Jackson says that the moon is sort of irrelevant in Norse mythology, then maybe in mythology. <laughs> but please do remember that this is true inside those medieval Icelandic books that uh, Jackson is an expert in. Um, his perspective is defined by and therefore also limited about, by uh, his specific expertise. And this is, of course, a general condition of all scholarship. Um, but uh, in fact, these Icelandic manuscripts, uh, they don't, they don't re reflect any importance of the moon. Cool. But that doesn't mean that Northern European didn't practice moon cult for probably millennia. Millennia, they, they probably did that. Uh, and when you take... An anthropology of religion's view a little bit beyond this narrowly defined Viking Age perspective, then you see those kind of things, and uh, yeah, and these are the kind of details that uh, we're trying to make available in a calendar of Nordic animism that we is being published for next year, and uh, this is an attempt to sort of re make a reclaim of traditional animist knowledge form in uh, that are characteristic of Northern Europe. So if you're interested, then uh, find Nordic Animism on Facebook and Instagram and follow the Nordic Animist calendar and the Nordic Animism channel. Uh, we're trying to bring this kind of uh, knowledge to you. And uh, yeah, the calendar will be published next year. Great. Thank you very much and see you around. Ciao.